Amen. Grab your Bibles if you would. You got your Bibles today? You got your Bible? You got the Word of God? Let me tell you something, teenager. When we, when we talk about Jesus, we're talking about the living Word of God. You understand that? We're talking about the living Word of God. Listen right here, teenager. When we talk about Jesus, we're talking about the living Word of God. You understand that? But that book that you have right now in your hands that's open in your lap, that is the written Word of God. Look at me. Look at me here real quick, teenager. I haven't told you to turn anywhere yet. Look at me. I want you to understand something. The Bible says that, that God has exalted His word even above His very name. And listen, we're going to take some time this morning. And, and I, don't, I don't pretend, I'm sorry, I don't pretend to be a real funny guy, but I, I, I want to I give you the truth this morning. So you have to listen on purpose. Are you with me? And I want you to get that Bible ready because we're going to go several places. And I want to share something with you that I believe God has burdened on my heart. And I think it would be a blessing to you. Uh, but uh, I, wanna, I want you to pay attention on purpose. Amen. Can we do that? Can we pay attention on purpose? Let's put away any distraction. All right. A lot of times that dis distraction is that little one-eyed devil in our pocket called, called our cell phone. Let's put away that distraction. I challenge our teens all the time I say listen prove to yourself and prove to the Lord that you control your cell phone your cell phone doesn't control you okay and let's let's focus in on the Word of God amen the Bible is the Word of God you believe that say amen the Bible is the Word of God would you say that with me the Bible is the Word of God say it again the Bible is the Word of God say it one more time the Bible don't you forget that we're going to Genesis chapter number three Genesis chapter number three <clears throat> Genesis chapter number three. Genesis chapter number three and verse number one. Everybody there? Okay, I want you to keep your Bible open right here and then we're going to go a couple other places but we're going to kind of stay centered around Genesis chapter number three. In Genesis chapter 3, uh, the, 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 we've seen creation happen in Genesis 1 and in, in, in Genesis 2. Genesis 3, we, we see kind of the first interaction of mankind. And we're going to see something here. And I want you to see this in Genesis chapter number 3. And look at verse number 1. Are you with me? The Bible says this in Genesis 3 and verse number 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Teenager, time out for one second. Who is the serpent? That's the devil. Listen, let me tell you something. The devil is more sly. He's more sneaky. He is more tricky than anything else in the world, than anyone else in the world. You and I cannot beat the devil. We cannot. And when the Bible says that we should not be ignorant of his devices. Hey, we are no match. Listen, we are no match. Greater is he that is in me. Yes, God is greater, but I am no match for the devil. You understand that? And here we see the very first thing that happens here in Genesis chapter 3. We see that the, 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 the serpent more subtle and it comes to the woman. The woman starts having a conversation with the serpent. And listen, we got too many teenagers. This isn't even the message this morning, but listen to me. We got too many teenagers. We got too many Christians who are having conversations with the devil. Because we are, we are, we are, the Bible says that we are not ignorant or we should not be ignorant of his devices. But when we look around and we mess with the things of the world, we mess with the things of the devil, don't be surprised when we fall for it. Why should we be surprised when we mess with things? The Bible says that ye are children of the light, so walk that way. Walk as children of the light. We should have no fellowship with the, un, with the ungodly works of darkness. And here's the woman having a conversation with the, with the devil. We know what's about to happen here. She's going to be deceived. But in the end, why in the world would we be surprised when we get deceived by the devil? That's what he does. Listen to me, teacher. That's what he does. He deceives. And we shouldn't be surprised like, about that. Tinger, look this way. Look this way. I mean this on my heart. I am not surprised when the world acts like the world. I am not surprised when unsaved people act unsaved. Do you know what is surprising? When the saved people, when the children of God act like they're unsaved. That's what's surprising. That's what's abnormal. And why are we having a conversation with the devil? Let's move on. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman... Yea, hath God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. What's the punctuation at the end of that verse? What is it? What is it? Say it to me. What is it? Yes, listen to me. Look right this way. Look right this way. Look at me and then we're going to go back to the passage in a second. The very first thing the devil ever said to mankind was a question. Do you see it? First conversation ever recorded between the devil and any human there's a question. And what is that question? The very first time 
that Satan ever communed or ever in any way attempted, the best we know from the scripture, to have a conversation or an interaction with a human, it was, it was a question, and that question was to question the word of God. Do you see it? That's what he was doing. Verse number two, and the woman said in the serpent, we may eat of every tree of the garden, or every, every, excuse me, eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. Do you see how the devil just directly contradicted God's word? Do you see it? Are you with me? Do you see how he just directly contradicted God's word? Just a minute ago I said, hey, the Bible is the... Word of God, and it's the truth, yes, it's the Word of God. But listen, the very first thing the devil ever did was come to man and question God's Word. And then after questioning God's Word, to directly contradict God's Word. He said, ye shall not die. Verse number five, you with me? Say amen, you with me? Yeah. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and and evil. Listen, I want you to see that the devil's more subtle, it's more sneaky than any other creation, than anything else. He is the sneakiest person, and he's after you. I want you to see that the first interaction that the devil had with mankind was in the form of a question, to question God. And then this was the question that was basically asked in verse number five, if I could paraphrase for just a little bit. Let me say it. Let me, let me, let me, let me get your attention here, because I want you to see this. This is what the devil said to mankind. He said, what is God trying to keep from you? What is God trying to keep from you? God just wants to spoil your fun. God just wants to make your life difficult. You know, God's just a big killjoy. He's a wet blanket, man. He just doesn't want you to have a good time. He just doesn't want you to have good things. Hey, he, he said, you're not going to die. And in that day, yeah, your eyes are going to be open. You're going to know all these things, all these things that, that, that God is trying to keep you from. You know, you know God, God's, just, God's just sheltering you. God, 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 is just, God is just putting you in a box. Isn't that what he's saying to him? Can I declare to you this morning, teenager, you need to get this. You need to get this deep down inside of you. That God is trying to keep you from something. You understand that? God is trying to keep me from something. Let me tell you, I declare to you today that I've been saved. I've been saved for, for 25 plus years. And I've had the privilege of serving God. And let me tell you something. I've missed out. You heard what I said? I've missed out. God has kept a bunch of things from me. Listen to me, young lady. You know what he's kept from me? He's kept from me a whole bunch of heartache. That's what he's kept me from. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right, young man. God fully intends to, to shelter you from some things. You know what he, what he wants to shelter you from? He wants to shelter you from a whole bunch of terrible consequences and a whole bunch more burdens that we don't need to face. Yes, God wants to keep you from something this morning, and I'm so glad for it. I'm so glad for it, man. Let me tell you something. When somebody says to you, oh, you're just one of them Christians, you're just sheltered. And you say, I'm thankful for it. I'm thankful I'm sheltered by his grace. I've missed out on heartaches. I've missed out on brokenness. I've missed, my life hasn't been perfect. We're talking about that in a minute. But listen, I'm telling you this morning, God does want to keep you from something. And I think this morning, if we can do nothing else, we need to make a decision that says, I'm no longer going to resent the grace of God that shelters me and keeps me from something and keeps me from those things of the world, but I am going to rejoice in a God that cares that much about me. Are you with me? That cares that much about me that he would keep me from those things. What a God. What a God. What a God that would shelter me. What a God that would put me in his grace and, 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 and would keep me from those things that, that, that he knows will hurt me. Hey, God was not trying to hurt Eve. God was trying to help Eve. God was not trying to hurt mankind. God was trying to help him. He said, you can have all of the... Man, my goodness. We are, we are, we are just... We're pretty pathetic in the end. I know I am, aren't we? He said, you can have every tree. Every single one. Just don't touch that one. And we don't know how long it was, but then they went right for that one, didn't they? And they fell for the trick of the devil. There was only one thing they couldn't have. And that was the one thing that God, the, the devil came to them questioning God and saying, God is trying to keep you from something. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. God was trying to keep them from death and from destruction. And by the way, just like God said, when they partook of that tree and when they fell into sin, they did die. They did die. 
It wasn't immediate, but it was the death of a relationship. It was the death of all mankind. You go to Romans 5, and the Bible says, Wherefore, is by one man sin into the world, and the death by sin. So the death is passed upon all men, because all men have sinned. God was trying to keep them from something. But I want to I focus in, if I could, on what I believe that question was being asked. And something I think that is so important this morning. I want to have a quick word of prayer, and then I want to kind of focus in on something. Help me out this morning, young person. I meant it when I said just a minute ago is, is, is I, don't, I don't really seek to entertain this morning. I don't really seek to, to, to get a laugh. I, I, what I want is I want your heart, okay? Not for me. I'm not worth listening to, but God's word is. And I believe that God has something for us this morning. As we, as we take a moment to pray, as I take a moment to pray, would you take a moment right there at your seat and still yourself? And I want you to forget who's on your left. I want you to forget who's on your right. And I want you to only focus on, on who is on the inside. I want you to ask God to speak to you this morning, if you would. Heavenly Father, thank you, God, for the opportunity to be here. What a privilege, Lord, that you would bring us to this place. And Lord, I know that we're already tired, but that's okay. Lord, we seek to not walk in the flesh this morning, but in the spirit. And God, our, though our bodies may be tired already and a little bit weak, Lord, we know that the more we're under the word of God, the stronger our spirit is. So Lord, I pray that you would speak, that your Holy Spirit, would speak to our spirit this morning, Father, and give us something from your word. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Young person, I believe that what God, what the devil was trying to question when he came to God was this very simply, and this is the message right here. But I believe that as he was coming to, him, to, to, to Eve, and then eat through Eve, then to Adam, and, and he, was saying, he was saying, you can partake of that fruit and tricking them in that, and then trying to get them to fall for the one thing God said not to. I believe this is what the devil was asking. He was asking one specific and one very simple, but one very important question. Don't miss it this morning, because here is the question that I really believe that the devil, if I'm paraphrasing just a little bit, that the devil was, was, was asking of of Eve in that moment, and this was the question that he was asking. Are you ready? Here it is. He was asking this question Is God good? Is God good? Or is God trying to keep something from you? Is God good, or is God trying to trick you? Is God good, or is God a liar? Is God good or is God just seeking to control? Is God just seeking to, 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 to only keep you away from things that you want? Is that, is that who God is or is he good? Hey, listen, in the end, I think this is why this is so important, young person, that we understand this question. Because in the end, you will in your life, are you with me? You will in your life do what you believe is good. When you go to the book of Judges, you go to the end of it, and the Bible says at the end of the book of Judges that in that day, every man did that which was, maybe you know the rest of it, right in their own eyes. Say that with me. They did right in their own eyes. They did what they believed was good. And in the world that we live in, we will all eventually, in that moment where it's just our choice and our decision, do what we believe is good. That's what we will do. We will pursue that which we think is best and that which we think is good in that moment. It was mentioned last night, but ladies, the world teaches us that the best and the good thing is to get that attention because there's this, there's this, there's this need you have inside to be fulfilled and, and maybe that guy can give it to you. And I'm telling you, that's, that a guy can't give that to you. Only God can give that to you. But, 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 but and you go after that because you say, oh, I think that's good. Or our world tells, tells men in our society, and yes, God made us to be the provider and God made us to be the leader of character and leadership, but that we should go after only seeking material things. And it's a trick of the devil. I'm telling you, it's a trick of the devil. But they're going after thinking, oh, that is the good thing that I have. And in the end, you will do what you believe is good. You will do it. And life will come along and will give you some good and give you a lot of bad. Listen to me, listen to me. I know that in the room this morning, and I don't know, probably half or more of the room in here, but I know in the room this morning, there's a lot of hurt. We're talking about good, so stay with me here for a minute. I know there's a lot of hurt. I know there's a lot of brokenness. I know that because we live in a very broken world. Have you seen that? You know what happens in the teenage years? This is what tends to happen. As you're growing older, I have, I have, I have three boys, six, four, and two. And my boys think that dad's the greatest. Don't tell them otherwise, okay, because eventually they're going to figure out that he's not. They think that he is. And when you were growing up, maybe you thought the same thing. You probably did. 
But as you grow older, you deal with enough brokenness to know, and as you reach your teenage years, you see the failures around you, and they are magnified, and they're big, and it starts to hurt. And, 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 you, and you, start, you start wondering, where's the goodness here? Where's the good things? I, I, I really do believe that, that this morning, there's, there's some people in this room, and, and your, your home, your home is, is maybe at times chaos. And in your home is, I was, I was going up to a, it was a while back, I was going up to visit a teenager that was newer in the church. <clears throat> And before I even reached the door, I could hear the yelling from the other side of the door. I could hear the screaming. And that was probably just kind of commonplace in that, in that home. It was a lot of hurt. I won't ask you or put you in the spot, but I know that in this, in this room, that there's a whole lot of broken homes that are represented. Mom and dad may be separated. Or maybe, maybe you say, I don't even know where dad is or where mom is. Stay with me. There's a lot of hurt. A lot of brokenness. There's a lot of pain. And many of you in here know a pain and a brokenness that not even I can relate to. And you know the things like, like remembering, trying to remember which house you left your stuff at. You know, so, so just even those simple things. Or, or you can't remember the last time that, that family sat down and had a dinner together. Or even had a civil conversation. I know there's a lot of hurts. Look, we're talking about good this morning, but we have to first identify that there's a lot of hurts. Are you with me? There's a lot of pain. I was, several years ago, I walked into church and I, and, and, and I noticed somebody new and they were sitting about in the middle section, about halfway. This is several years ago. I've never seen this person. And as I tried to do, I, I want to greet people. And so I went up and I, I went to go greet this lady. She's probably a middle-aged lady. You could tell that she was a little bit disheveled and, and a little bit dirty. And I went up to shake her hand. I said, my name is Mark Lenentine. How are you? And she pulled her hand back and she said, you don't want to talk to me. And I said, no, I'd like to, I'd like to shake your hand. She said, no, you don't want to shake my hand. And she kind of pulled back. And I, I kind of got down close. I don't think I've ever had anyone really react to me that way before. And I said, I said no, I, I, I'd like to greet you, and I want to welcome you to you know, Gospel Light Baptist Church. She said, you don't want to talk to me. She said, I'm, I'm homeless, and I'm dirty. Nobody really likes me. And I talked to her for a few moments, but you could tell the walls were up, and she thought very little of herself and, and, and just didn't feel very valued in life. And just the brokenness, the incredible brokenness. And I'd venture to say that I don't know that that lady has experienced good or what she believed to be good in a very, very long time. We bring it down to kind of where, where, where your heart, where your hurts are. And the relationship or the lack thereof, or the broken relationship that you have at home and with your parents. Maybe, maybe in this room, and I, and I bet that there is, Maybe in this room, you have in many moments vividly seen a parent or a family member heavily under the influence of alcohol or drugs, and you've seen how that affects your home, and you've seen the brokenness that is there, and you've seen the destruction that is there from that. You've seen firsthand someone wayward. You've seen firsthand the, 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 someone, someone walk out or someone leave you or turn your back on you. Listen to me, maybe this morning, young person, maybe this morning your pain is so deep you've not talked to anybody about it. You don't feel that you can. You don't feel that you know how to. And in your mind, you're asking a very similar question to yourself. Is God good? Is God good? Are you with me? Is God good? How could God be good when you look around at my home? How could God be good when I don't know mom or I don't know dad or I don't know where they are? How could God be good if it seems that I can't, uh, I can't have that relationship with the people I'm supposed to love the most? How could God be good if he would take that person from me? How could God be good? Is he good? And I believe that you're really struggling with that on the inside. 
Look at me, teenager. Listen to me very carefully. Listen to me. I believe more than anything else. I believe more than any other temptation. This is what drives teenagers becoming young adults away from church. Because they're running away from God because they're not convinced that He is good. And I'm saying, I'm telling you this morning, there's a part of me that doesn't even want to blame you. There's a part of me that just really, really breaks for you. Are you with me? And inside, you think to yourself, in those quiet moments when you can't drown it out with other noise, maybe at night when you toss and turn and you can't find sleep and you think to yourself, is God really good? Is there any way? I've been told that he is and I go to church and I try, but I, I, don't, I don't know that I see it. Is he really good? Maybe this morning, teenager, it's just that when you think about your future, you think there's a lot of things that you could do. And you're just wondering, is God good? Is he good enough for me to surrender? Is he good enough for me to trust when it comes to my future? Or, I, or do I need to go out on my own? Or do I need to do it on my own? Do I need to go grab these things on my own and try to live my own life out there? Is God good? Listen to me, teenager, this morning. I'm here to tell you something. I came here this morning to tell you something if I could only tell you one thing. Our God is good. Listen to me, young man. Our God is good. Our God is good. Listen to me, teenage lady. Our God is good. Our God is good. And you need to be convinced of that. And if that's the only thing we can be convinced of this morning, we need to hear it again and again. My God is good. He's a good God. I don't need anyone else. My God is good. I don't need anything else. My God is good. I don't need to go find it on my own. I don't need to make my own way in life. I don't need to try it on myself. I don't need to go out there and try it myself. I don't need to, I don't need to go into, into sin and just see how it is. I don't need to go out there and, 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 and make my own way and do those own things on my own strength because my God is good. Write down a couple of things, if you would, just a couple of questions that I want you to ask yourself. Because maybe you struggle with that same question on the inside of, is God good? Write down this question. Are you ready? Who is putting this doubt in my heart? I want to ask these questions inwardly. Who is putting this doubt in my heart? Who is putting this doubt in my heart? I want you to ask that question because you need to answer that question yourself in your own life. See, Galatians chapter 2 and then Galatians, I believe, chapter number 5, asked the same question over and over or, or, or several times and asked this question because it was saying, you're saying you did run well, you were doing good. Who, who, listen to me, who did hinder you? Who did hinder you? Many times in life, our doubts are a who, not a what. They come from a person or the people that we are listening to in our life. The voices we are listening to. Listen, I'd be quick because I need to move on. I, I want to get moving here, but you need to understand this is very important. Are you with me? Are you with me? Say amen. You with me? Amen. All right, you listen so good, man. You guys are so easy to preach to. I, I want to I keep moving forward. Are you ready? The who. There are so many voices in our world today, and those voices are planting doubt in our life. And so often a young person comes to a conference and they think, man, my God is so good. And they, and they get stirred up and God speaks to them. And man, it happened last night. How many God spoke to your heart last night? And, but but then, we're gonna, then we're gonna go home and then there's gonna be voices that are there or that we invite into our life. They're gonna turn around and take that faith that was built up, that was stirred up within us and it's gonna destroy it. You did run well. Who did hinder you? Who did hinder you? Let me ask you a question, young person. What voices are you introducing into your life? This is why we need the voices that support the Word of God. This is why we need the voices in our music and in the media that we listen to and in our friends that lift us up in the Lord. Because I'll tell you something, this doubt and this struggle that we have of, is God good? The world is not convinced that God is good. If they were convinced that God is good, they would be coming to Him in droves. They'd be, coming to, they'd be seeking Him out. And some people are, but I'm telling you, there is a world in the world system that does not love God, that, is, that has set themselves against Him, and it's because they believe He's not good. He's not worth it. Maybe he doesn't exist. So who are the voices that is putting this doubt in my heart? Let me ask you another question. Ask yourself this question. Write this down. Has God ever let me down before? Has God ever let me down before? Think about that. My God has been really good to me. My God has not let me down. Psalms 37, 25, the Bible says, I've been young and now I'm old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. I'm going to tell you something. God is so good to us. God gives us what we need when we need it on his timeline and according to his will. But God gives us what we need. And my God has been so good to me. Has your God been good to you? Has your God been good to you? Has your God given you the things in life that you need? Hey, has God ever let me down before? And let me ask you this question here. What has God done for me in the past? What has God done for me in the past? 
What has God done for me in the past? The book of Psalms, and we're going to go all over Psalms in just a minute. Stay, stay with me. The book of Psalms has, has a, 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 a passages all through that talk about all the things that God has done for me over and over and over. The book of Psalms is actually just a whole letter of David pouring out his heart to God, saying, God, I'm so overwhelmed at how good you've been to me and all the things that you've done for me. And I never want to forget. I never want to forget how good my God is to me. I never want to forget that. And it's the whole book. He's, he's going through it. But as you notice in the life of David, yes, he was a king, and yes, he was royalty, and yes, he had some nice things, but David had lived a life of heartache. He lived a life of heartache and loss and his own family turning, his back on, uh, turning their back on him. David did not live just an easy and smooth life. There were a lot of things that were not going right. And in fact, in Psalm chapter number 55, Psalm 55, grab your Bible. I want you to go to this passage. I want you to go there. And maybe, maybe if you do this, and I recommend this as it speaks to you, maybe to underline something, to highlight something, to circle something in your Bible. Make it personal. Make it yours. This is the word of God to you. God's love letter to you. Psalm 55, verse number 17. Psalm 55, verse number 17. The Bible says this in Psalms 55, 17. Are you there? I'll move quickly, all right? So get ready to turn quick because we're going to go to several different places. I want to use the word of God this morning. Psalms 55, verse number 17. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. Evening and morning and noon, I'm going to cry aloud and he will hear my voice. Teenager, look this way. I know that you're struggling with some things. And I know there are so many burdens in this room. And as I, as I, as I think back on the, on the years and over 10 years that I've worked in youth ministry, and I think, man, it, 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 there are so many things that would just break your heart and the, and the things that you go through. And I'm telling you, it's, it's not fair. And it shouldn't be that way. But we just live in a very broken society by sin. But I want to tell you something. Thank God that at evening and morning and at noon, I can pray and I can cry aloud. And what does the last part of that verse say? Look at it. What does it say he will do? do and he say it with me and he shall hear my voice say it again and he shall hear say it one more time and he shall hear my voice you don't get a promise from anyone else like that no one else we might have a lot of people in our life that are there for us and praise the Lord for that and I'm glad we have that we should have those people there's only one person though who promised you that no matter when you came and no matter what your heartache was, and no matter what you said, he said, I hear your voice. I hear your voice. Woo! He hears my voice this morning. Aren't you glad for that? Teenage, I don't know what you're going through, but the Bible says evening and at morning and at noon, I can cry out and he will hear my voice. You say, but you don't know what I'm going through. But I, I, maybe I don't, but I can tell you this, that at evening and morning and at noon, you can cry out and he'll hear your voice. And you say, but you don't know what's going on in my home. And I'm going to tell you it's probably awful and it probably hurts. And I'm sure it hurts deeply. But I do know this, that at evening and at morning and at noon, you can cry and he'll hear your voice. And you say, but I don't have my relationship with my parents is so broken and, it, and, it, and I don't understand why they act that way and I don't understand why that's happened or I don't understand why that happened to me or I don't understand why God took that person from me or whatever it be I, I don't know what the hurt is but I know this this morning you with me that at evening and morning and at noon I can cry and what does it say and he shall hear my voice that's a good God that's a good God. And if you can't figure out anything else to be excited about in your Christian life, why don't you be excited that at evening and morning and at noon that you can cry out and he shall hear your voice. Listen, God said that, God said that our problem is not that he's not willing to answer, it's that we neglect to ask. Right? You have not because he... That's not. And David said, I am so grieved. I came to God at evening and morning and noon and I cried. And the amazing thing is, is every time I came, he was there ready to hear. Every time I came and I gave him my, I gave him my problem, I gave him my sorrow, he was willing to hear. And my God says to me, come unto me, all ye that labor are heavy laden, heavy laden. That's a big burden. He said, take my yoke upon you and, and learn of me. He said, I will give you rest. He said, my yoke is easy. Let me tell you, it's not a burden to be a Christian. No, 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 no. It's a burden not to be. It's not a burden to come to the Lord and, oh, I got to walk with God. No, it's a burden not to. 
not to. Let me ask you this morning, if you're struggling with something and the problems that are going on in your life, those problems are bigger than you can handle. Those problems are bigger than you can handle. Let me tell you something, teenager. Look, I'm getting a little bit off script here, but I'm, telling, I'm just speaking from the heart this morning. Listen, maybe you want to write this down. I hear Christians say this all the time. I'm not against them, but I'm telling you, they make an incorrect statement here. And they'll say something like this. Well, God will never give you more than you can handle. Show me that in the book. Show me that in the book. What did God, what did God allow in Job's life? You know the story of Job? What did, God, what did God allow in Job's life? Do you think probably more than he could handle? Yeah, I think so. What did God allow in David's life? What did God allow, uh, in, as we see all throughout Scripture? Hey, listen, when you, and when you go and you see the different stories, what did God allow in those people's lives? It was more than they could bear. So thank God. Listen, those problems you have, you can't, you can't handle them alone. Thank God that I can come to him morning and evening and noon. Are you with me? Everybody with me this morning? Everybody with me this morning? Here, let's stand up. Everybody stand up for a second. Everybody stand up. Everybody stand up. I, I, I know it's Thursday morning. I know it's Thursday morning. Everybody stand up. You ready? Grab your Bibles. Grab your Bibles. Go to Psalms chapter 84. Grab your Bibles and go to Psalms 84. Psalms 84. Psalms 84. Are you with me? Psalms 84, verse number 11. Look at this. Psalms 84, 11. Psalms 84, 11, for the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Are you there? Maybe you want to take a pen and you want to underline that phrase right there. No good thing will he withhold from those that walk uprightly. I'll tell you, God is good and God is so good. Not only is he good, he will not withhold from you one good thing. Teenager, are you hurting this morning? You got problems at home? You feel really discouraged about something? Confused? Maybe it makes me so mad, guys. Maybe it makes me so mad. I just want to bob the fist. I just want to hit something. And that fixes nothing. Maybe it, just, maybe it frustrates you so much that I just go to my room and I cry and I feel like I can't control it. Is God good? No good thing will he withhold from you. No good thing will he withhold from you. Hey, listen to me. Listen to me, guys. I said no good thing will he withhold from you. Listen to me, man. Listen to me. If God's, if God's word speaks to you, say amen to it. I don't need that. But I, listen, you get excited about something. Are you with me? You get excited about something, don't you? How many here you like sports? I like sports. You like sports? Isn't it funny how we get really excited about sports, man, but when it comes to the preaching of God's word, we kind of just sit there like it doesn't move us? I'll speak to me for a minute. Hey, I'll speak to me for a minute because I like sports, man. Ooh, Iowa Hawkeyes. He likes sports right there, right? And, but hey, we get really moved about sports, don't we? And then all of a sudden we come into church and it's just kind of like, okay, what, is this over yet? I want to help you this morning, young person. When I agree with God's word, I'm saying I'm reminding myself constantly, hey, I believe God is good. I believe God is good. Amen? Hey, ladies, I believe God is good. No good thing will he withhold. No good thing. I want you to see this. Turn one more place and we'll sit down, okay? I'm just trying to keep you awake this morning. Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61. You got your Bible? We're going to move quickly. Isaiah chapter number 61. Isaiah 61. Look at this in Isaiah chapter number 61. Isaiah chapter number 61 and verse number 3. Oh, I love this. Maybe you want to underline another phrase. This is awesome. Isaiah 61 and verse number 3. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Do you see the burden? Do you see the burden? Those that mourn in Zion. That's God's people. And they are hurt and they are broken over something. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give unto them. Read the next three words with me. Beauty for ashes. No good thing. No good thing will we withhold from you. Beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the plants of the Lord, that he might be glorified. You can be seated. I love this verse from Jeremiah 29, 11. Maybe you want to write this down. Jeremiah 20, 11, the Bible says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, the thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Do you realize how good God is this morning? So I need you to get this. Are you ready? So I'm just going to give you three words. Three words and then we're going to be done. You're listening so well. So listen to these three words. You ready? First of all, the first P is the principle. 
Here's the principle. Are you ready? Here's the principle. I'm, I want to read you a verse first from Job chapter 1. If you want to go there, you can go there. If not, just listen. Job chapter number 1. Job chapter number 1 and verse 21. I just don't want to misquote it because it's such a great verse. Job chapter 1 and verse number 21. Job lost his family. Job lost his riches. Job lost his health. Essentially, Job lost his wife, but, but the devil did something that was probably even worse at times. He turned the person that he loved the most on, the, on earth, his, the, the, the earth relationship, he turned that person against him. And this is what Job said. Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Job, how in the world, Job, do you decide that you're going to bless God after all that had happened? Write down Job 121 if you're taking notes. I want you to know that verse. That's a great verse. That'll stir you right there in those moments that you're hurting. Psalms chapter 38. Write, write this verse down. Psalms chapter 38 and verse number 20. The Bible says, They also that render evil for good are mine adversaries because I follow the thing that good is. Do you realize that God doesn't just do good? He is good. That's what God, God is good. That's what he does. So here's the principle. Are you ready? Maybe you wrote down that piece. So here's the principle that I want to give you. Here's the truth you have to understand about the burdens that we're dealing with and what it really means and what, and what we have to know as it relates to God and his word. The goodness, you ready? The goodness of God is not affected by my circumstances. The goodness of God is not affected by my circumstances. Think with me, think with me. If the goodness of God was connected or tied to the circumstances that I am currently going through, would Job be able to say that God was good? No, he wouldn't have. No, just about everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. But Job still said, blessed be the name of the Lord. Look, here's the principle you have to understand. Here's the principle you have to understand. That God's goodness is not connected to our circumstances. God's goodness is not connected. I want you to see another P. We're moving quickly. I want you to see another P. I want you to see this word, a pruning, a pruning. I'm going to grab me a tree real quick. Are you ready? I'm going to grab me a tree. Here we go. A pruning. Write that down. We, we, we said, what was the first P? It was what? The principle. And the principle is that God's goodness is not what? God's goodness is not affected by my? Say it with me. God's goodness is not affected by my? Okay, so here we go. Number two, a pruning. Hopefully you hold your, you hold your place there in Genesis chapter number three. I want you to go back there real quick. Genesis chapter number three. Here's another reason, or here's another uh, reason why we, we, we struggle sometimes to believe in the goodness of God. Are you with me? We just got three Ps. We said principle in pruning. Look at verse, look at verse number, uh, uh, or chapter three, verse number six. So verse number five, uh, the, the devil d finishes his temptation to Eve. Watch this, you ready? Verse number six, remember, the serpent comes, he's more subtle, he's tricky, he questions God, he directly contradicts God, he asks her, what is God trying to keep from you? And he's basically asking the question, is God good? What was the question? Say it with me. Is God good? Look at verse number six, are you ready? And when the woman saw that the tree was good, that the tree was good, are you with me? That the tree was good for food. Eve makes a decision that in that moment, she's going to believe that a thing is good and not that God is good. Hey, God, can I trust you in this? Hey, God, can I trust you on your word? I don't know that I agree with it. I don't know that I understand it. So can I trust it? And instead, Eve decides to trust that the tree was good. And the devil was coming to deceive her. And to trick her into taking of that fruit, to partaking of the sin. And she looks at it and she decides, she decides in that moment that the tree was good that the tree was good, instead of being fully convinced that God was good. Hey, listen to me. Listen to me the more teenage. Listen, listen, listen. You ready? You ready? There are things in our life right now that we believe or we behave have more goodness than God. I believe because you love the Lord. And I think that you do. My goodness, I think you love the Lord. That's why you're here. But we would probably never admit it with our mouth because we know that would be wrong. But in our behavior, there are things in our life that we treat like they have more goodness than God. And Eve looked, a tree? The tree was good? Hey, Eve, is God good? And Eve goes, I mean, I don't know, the tree's good. The tree's good. So there has to be a pruning where we take those things and we cut out of our life the things that we have treated as more good than God. Are you with me? The things that we have treated as more good than God. 
Maybe it's a relationship. Maybe it's, a, maybe it's something that's got a hold of you, a temptation. Hey, maybe in some cases it's just the media that we consume or the devices upon which we consume it that have got us addicted. And, you know, it's funny to me that we can sit down and we can, we can watch and we can watch all these episodes of a, of a show we like on Netflix or we could spend a whole night playing Fortnite, but we ask you, when was the last time you read your Bible? And we say, I don't have time. You know, our walk with God has never been a time issue. It's always been a heart issue. It's always been a heart issue. And there's things in our life we have to come and we have to cut out because we are behaving like they are more good than God. There is nothing that is more good than God, young person. There is nothing that is more good than the goodness of God. And we need to go into our life. And as the Holy Spirit may speak to you this morning, I hope that He does, that there are things in my life that I need to prune, that I need to cut out of my life because I am treating them like they are more good than God. And when I do that, I'm not convinced of the goodness of God. And just like Eve, I might go to a tree and I might take at the temptation the devil has for me and I might look at this and I might say to myself, huh, I think maybe that future that I want for myself, maybe that's good. I think maybe that relationship with that girl I think is good. Or that relationship with that guy, I see that and I think it's good. Or I think to live in a worldly and a sensual way, desiring the attention, desiring the glory that belongs only to God, I think that that's good. Maybe I'll partake of that right there. Eve saw that the tree was good. No, Eve, God is good. God is good. Why would I look at a creation and worship it over the Creator? There must be a pruning of the things in our life that we treat as more good than God. Here's your last one. Are you ready? Number three. Here's your last P. Are you ready? Praise. 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 I'm going to go to 2 Chronicles chapter number 7. Are you with us this morning? 2 Chronicles chapter number 7. If you're with us, say amen. 2 Chronicles chapter 7. I want to read just a couple of verses here for you real quick. 2 Chronicles 7. I want you to see it. Okay, so, so you go there also. I'm sorry, you go there if you would. 2 Chronicles chapter 7. I'm going to start reading in verse number 1. The Bible says, Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering, the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. They're meeting with God, man. There's a revival happening. Just like we could experience revival this week, and just like what we're about to see in verse number three, if we experience revival this week, it will surely include this right here. Are you ready? Verse number three. And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshiped and praised the Lord, saying, what they say? Read it with me. For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. For he is good. When I have a spirit of praise, I look at God and I remind myself over and over and over that God is good. And in fact, what I realize is that no matter what the revival in my heart was, at a church service, at an altar, at a camp, at a youth conference, whatever it is, and maybe I was saying, I want to give up this or I want to do this for the Lord. But in the end, what I'm really saying is, the Lord is good. The Lord is good. Every revival of our heart will start with us in one form or fashion believing or saying or behaving in a way that we say the Lord is good. And you say, well, that's pretty basic. Yeah, it is pretty basic. So we miss it every single time. It's so simple that sometimes we miss it. That we don't behave like the Lord is good. Go to Psalms 107. Last place to turn. Psalms chapter 107. Look at this from Psalms 107. Maybe circle or underline a few more verses here from Psalms 107. Psalms 107. Are you there? Are you there? Okay, one more time. Let's all stand. Grab your Bible and stand. Psalms 107. Are you ready? Here we go. You ready? Look at this. Psalms 107. You guys are doing so good and we're, we're, we're almost done. Listen, Psalms 107. Look at this. Are you ready? Are you there? Say amen if you're there. Amen. Okay, here we go. Psalms 107. Look at verse number 8. I want you to read the first phrase with me. Are you ready? Psalms 107, verse number 8. Read it with me. Ready? Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness. Oh, that's a good verse, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Go to verse number 15. 
Would you read the first phrase with me again? Ready? Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Look at verse number 21. Look at verse number 21. Maybe you're catching on. What does it say? Say it with me. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness. Look at verse number 31. This is kind of crazy, isn't it? Look at verse number 31. Oh, that men would praise the Lord. Obviously, we have a problem here. We have a great need, don't we? And God knows it. God knows our great need is to live a life of praise where we give God the praise he deserves for his goodness, for how good God is. Hey, if we were to give God the praise he deserves and the goodness that he deserves for how good he has been in my life, let me tell you something, teenager. Our struggles would seem smaller. Our valleys would seem brighter. Our burdens would seem lighter. Our temptations would seem weaker. You can be seated, but listen. I believe... I believe with all my heart, and I believe this. I, man, I believe this. I've become more convinced of this, Brother Gary. Way. With, every, with every passing year, I've become more convinced of this. That we wouldn't have to go to teenagers over and over and over and say, give up the world's music, give up the world's music, give up the world's music. If down inside of your heart, your heart was filled with praise to your creator and the music that you had on your iPod and in your ears that you sang in church, that was the only music you wanted because your heart was so full of the goodness of God that when you heard the world's music or when you had an opportunity to listen to the world's music, you would say, I don't want that. It doesn't speak to what I love. It doesn't say anything about the God that I am so consumed with his goodness we wouldn't have to say all the time young ladies don't give your heart away to every guy don't do the wait for the one that God has for you if you just said I don't want that because my heart is so filled with how good my God is that I wouldn't give that to somebody else I wouldn't give someone else something that God deserves something that God has done in my life teenage you believe God is good do you believe God is good? Do you believe God is good? I know you got burdens. I know you might have struggles. But do you believe God is good? I know things may not always be right at home. I know you might be dealing with something that I don't, I don't even believe you should have to be dealing with. But do you believe God is good? I can't always change my circumstance, but I can change my praise. I can change my attitude towards the Lord. I can, instead of taking time and, and being so greedy. You ever been there? I know you've been there. Where it's like all you can think about and you're consumed with the burden and you're consumed with the pain and I don't blame you. But what if instead morning and evening and noon you just cried aloud and you reminded yourself of the goodness of God? Do you believe God is good? Do you believe in your heart that God is good? And for no other reason in the world, I know God is good. Because God bestowed his goodness upon me when he gave me the best thing that he ever had, which was his son, Jesus Christ. Woo! He gave me Jesus, man. He gave me Jesus. And if I never got anything else, and by the way, I, I, I get a whole lot else. But if I never got anything else, we got Jesus. As if all the blessings... And as if all the good and the perfect gifts that come down from above, the Bible talks about, if it, as if all of that was not enough, he packaged up all of his goodness. He took all the goodness of the Godhead, all the power of who God was, and he bestowed it in and was possessed in who Jesus was. And then he sent Jesus into the world, and we took that goodness and we treated it like it wasn't good. But he did it anyways. He did it anyways because that's how good God is. Do you believe this morning that God is good? Do you believe this morning that God is so good that he's greater than the pain and the, and, and the difficulty and the burden that you face? No matter what's going on at home, do you believe that God is good? No matter what goes on around you, do you believe God is good? Look, I'm telling you, there might be a teenager in here and you're thinking to yourself, man, I don't know about this Christianity thing. I don't, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to live it. I might just pass, you know, bide my time until I get out of the youth group or whatever it may be. There's not so many people on my back you know, about these different things. And really what you're asking yourself, you're asking yourself, is God good? Can I trust Him? Can I trust Him with my future? Let me tell you something. Do you believe God is good this morning? Let me ask you a question. Do you believe God is good this morning? When was the last time you reminded yourself of that? You know, we have so many things. I was thinking about this the other day. How many of you have a phone? You have a phone? You have a phone? 
We have so many things that pop up all over our notifications. One of my good friends just texted me that he's watching. Love you, Brother Collins. Hey, we have all kinds of notifications that pop up all over this thing. What if we took this thing right here? What if we took this and we put some notifications on here, morning and evening and noon, that just said, hey, God's good. God's good. We got all these notifications that pop up that says, read this, do this, click that. What if we took this thing and we used it to remind ourselves how good God was? We'd probably be far less likely to use it for evil, huh? What if we took this thing right here and we use it to remind other people how good God is? And, on, and constantly on our lips that God has been so good to me. How many of you believe God's been good to you? You believe this morning God's been good to you? Deep down in your heart, you know, man, you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God has been good to you. I have some young people who are going to help me sing a song. If you guys would get in place for that, I want to just sing a song. I want to, we're going to try to just teach you a song. It's kind of new to us, but I just love this song. It speaks to me. God gave us everything when he gave us his son, Jesus Christ. And young person, if this morning we could become, become real convinced, I mean real convinced, that God is good and that Jesus Christ is all I need in my life, it would change your life. It would make your burden seem lighter. It would, it would make those struggles and those things that you deal with seem not so big. I want you to listen again. Just, 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 just bear with us this morning. It's a new song to many of us. They're going to get in place and sing this. Demetrius, help me out with that if you would. The words are, I'll take Jesus. I want, you to, I want you to listen to this song. And then maybe in even a minute, I want you to sing it with us if you would. We good? You good? All right. As soon as you guys are ready, just go ahead and sing this song for us. I want you to think about this. If we believe, if we really believe that God is good, if we really believe down in our heart that God is good to us and that Jesus is all I need, I'm telling you, it would revolutionize us and we'd have a revival. Go ahead and play it whenever you're ready, Amy. It would, it would revolutionize our heart. It would revolutionize our walk with God if we really believe that. Listen to this as I sing it. Stumbling through my life and all the choices I have made. Looking to the right and left, so hard to find my way. Coming to a crossroad where I caught a glimpse of him. Think about it. The Savior reaching out to me with hands that bore my sin. No greater love was shown. Then on the cross at Calvary, I decided then and there that the choice was clear to me. Think about it on the course. That I'll take Jesus. Is that your prayer? I'll take Jesus. I'll take Jesus every time. Is ready? And he means more to me than the world. There's no question in my mind, I'll take Jesus every time. Think about it. What if opportunity should rise up like the sun and shine so bright on all the promises of what I could become? Luring hands of compromise could offer wealth and fame. Tempting me to turn around, yep. denying yep. Jesus' name. Well, I'd rather be a poor man Think about and that. have riches in the truth. So without a second thought, let me tell you what I do. Sing it. Join us in that chorus if you know I'll it. I'll take Jesus. Lift up your voice. I'll take Jesus. I'll take Jesus every time. And he means more to me than the world you see. There's no question in my mind. I'll take Jesus every time. Sing that chorus again. And I'll take Jesus. I'll take Jesus. I'll take Jesus every time. And he means more to me than the world you 
mercy. There's no question in my mind. I'll take Jesus every time. Are you believing? Do you believe that God is good? Do you believe that God has been good to you? For no other reason, like the song says, He gave me Jesus. And listen to me, young person, I truly mean what we said at the beginning of this message. My heart breaks for you because the burdens you face are big. Some of the things you face are overwhelming. But maybe it's been a while since you just drew a circle, cleared off a little spot, and reminded yourself that God is good. And that goodness doesn't have anything to do with what's going on at home. And that goodness does not have anything to do with the struggles I'm facing. And that goodness is not diminished by the doubts I have about my future. He's just good. He's just been real good to me. And if we got convinced of that, I'm telling you, if we got convinced of that down in, our, down in the, the deepest, darkest parts of us, if we got convinced of that, we wouldn't struggle so much in our walk with the Lord. We wouldn't so easily invite the temptations and the destructions of sin into our hearts. Young person, would you stand with us? Stand if you would to your feet. Take us back to the beginning of that, Demetrius. Let's sing it from the top. And young person, I want you to sing that. But more than that, if you want to come do business with God, if you want to come do business, you do, you do business with God any way that you think you need to. Listen to me, young person, we are not here to leave. So I don't want anybody walking out. We're, we're, we're doing business with the Lord, okay? And if you want to come to an altar, or if you want to get and pray with somebody, or if you're just there at your seat, we just want to sing and praise the Lord here for a few moments. And you do business with God in whatever way that you believe the Holy Spirit is leading you. And if it's been a while since you drew a little spot and you said, I need to remind myself that no matter what's going on, God's good to me. And no matter how hard it's been, God's good to me. And no matter my burdens, God's good to me. Has it been a while since you reminded yourself of that? Hey, he said that his burden is light. You can give it to God morning and evening and at noon, and cry out, and every time know that He hears me. He hears me. Hey, I think I'll just take Jesus. I think that I'll take Jesus over my own ambitions. I think I'll take Jesus over my own, my, the temptations that come my way and, and my besetting sins. I think I'll take Jesus over all of that. I think I'll take Jesus over discouragement. I think I'll take Jesus over the burdens that I have. And that, 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 that just grind on me and that I, I feel like I can't, I can't get through. I'll take Jesus over all of that. Go ahead and sing that song for us. There's nothing through my life and all the choices I have made. Do business, young person. Don't be in a rush. Looking to the right and left, so hard to find my way. Coming to a crossroad. Caught a glimpse of him, the Savior reaching out to me with hands that bore my sin. No greater love was shown than at the cross of Calvary. Amen. I decided then and there that the choice was clear to me. But I'll take Jesus. I'll take Jesus, I'll take Jesus every time, and He means more to me than the world you see, there's no question in my mind, I'll take Jesus every time person if you're doing business with the Lord I want you to continue on don't don't be in a rush we're not in a rush by any means brother Zach can you stay up here and help me out brother Zach up here has a uh, has some decision cards if you need to make a decision for the Lord if you want to make if you want to just commit to something here this morning we want to encourage you to write that down uh, and to make that decision uh, uh, to something that's sealed in your heart that you're giving to the Lord young person I want you to take the time to just pause and remind yourself that God is good Maybe we need, to, maybe we need to, to, to go to somebody, be it a sibling or a friend or someone else in our youth group and say, hey, let's spend a little bit of time here together and not rush and just tell God and just remind ourselves, tell ourselves and, 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 and thank God for his goodness to us that God is good. 
Hey, maybe, young person, there's some in this room that says, I need to get rid of something that is keeping me from treating God like He is good. I'm after that tree. You know, I think that tree is the good thing. Whatever it may be, what is the tree in your life rather than God? Go ahead and sing that second verse. What if opportunity should rise up like the sun and shine so bright on all the promises of what I could become? Luring hands of compromise and offer exactly. wealth and fame, okay. tempting me uh, to turn around, denying Abigail. Jesus' Abigail. name. Can I use well, I'd rather be a poor man have riches in the truth That's good. so without a second thought let me tell you what i do think about it i'll take jesus join us in that chorus i'll take jesus i'll take jesus every time and he means more to me than the world you see there's no question in my mind. I'll say Jesus every time. Sing that chorus again. And I'll take Jesus. I'll take Jesus. I'll take Jesus every time. And He means more to me than the world you see. There's no question in my mind. I'll take Jesus every time. He means more to me. And He means more to me than the world you see. There's no question in my mind. I'll take Jesus every time. Keep playing, Amy. Keep playing. There's still people dealing with the Lord. And I want to promise you we're not in a rush. I, I want to promise you this. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not stretching anything out. Hang on just a second, guys. If you would, just stay. We might do it again. Just hang out. I'm not trying to manufacture or just, or just draw something out. But look right here, young person. I, I know this. I know that we get used to going through the motions. I'm not saying that's what you're doing. But, but can, we, can we just kick that to the curb where it belongs? Just say, I, I don't want to go through the motions. What I want is I want the Spirit of God to speak to me. And I want to be ready to listen to that voice, that still small voice inside. No matter what's going on around, no matter what, I, I, want, to I want to care more about that than what people think. I want to care more about that than anything that I treat as important. Eve said, I look at that tree and I saw that the tree was good. In that moment, I took God from where he belonged and his goodness and I demoted him. And I put something else above him. Let me ask you a question. Bow your head and close your eyes. Let me ask you a question because I want to ask you kind of a personal question if we can. No one's looking around. No one's looking around. How many here you would say there's something in my life? And, and I know what it is because I believe the, the Holy Spirit of God put his finger right on it. I'm not even admitting right now I'm ready to really deal with that. But I'm just admitting that there's something in my life. That in my, in my moment that I'm honest with God, it gets in the way of me giving God the praise that he deserves for his goodness. A something or a someone. And you'd put your hand up to that right there without anybody looking around. You testify and you say, sure. Young person, I'm going to be honest with you, my hand is up. Because we start to take it for granted. Young person, if you believe that God has put that on your heart, or adult, God has put that on your heart. And that's in your mind right now, it's there for a reason. I want you to decide right now if you think that whatever that is, if it has more goodness than God. And if you come to the conclusion, like I bet you would, that it does not, not even close, have as much goodness as God, would you put it where it belongs? And maybe we need to do business with God Maybe we need to give God the glory that He deserves and not give it unto another. And we need to put God back where He belongs. 
You say, but Brother Mark, you don't know what's going on in my life, and I don't. I don't know. I, 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 don't even know. I wouldn't even know how to identify with the pain that you might be feeling for many of you in this room. I can say this emphatically, though, that God is good. God is good. There's still those at the altar, so I'm not, I'm not just trying to draw it out, but what I'm inviting you to is if you need to do business with the Lord, and maybe you've not come forward yet, maybe you already have, but you felt maybe, man, I don't know that I'm done. The invitation time is still going. The Lord is still speaking, so let's let Him continue to speak. And if you still need to come forward to the altar, let's be willing to do that right now. Let's be willing to do that in this moment. I believe there's already one come forward for salvation this morning. If that's you, if you don't know for sure that you're saved, the most goodness God ever showed to us is in Jesus Christ. If you've never made Jesus Christ your Savior, young person, I'm telling you, it's time. It's time. It's time for you to quit fighting it. You come forward this morning, don't be ashamed. I wouldn't, I, Brother Dinden said it, I believe it was Brother Dinden said it last night, and he's so right. I wouldn't go to hell for anybody. You say, I don't know, you don't know, I, I don't know what, what somebody else would think. You don't know what my parents would think. My parents think I'm saved. Or my youth pastor thinks I'm saved. My pastor thinks I'm saved. Or I don't know what they're going to think of me. Or I don't want to come forward in front of everybody. I wouldn't go to hell for anybody. If you're struggling with whether or not you're saved, I'm telling you, teenager, it's time. It's time. Let it go and invite the greatest thing that God ever gave us, His Son, Jesus Christ, to be your Savior. You come forward, you can settle that right now. Can we sing that song again? Do we have a few, even if it's a few of you guys, let's do it, whoever's up here. Let's do that one more time, because I believe the, the Lord is still speaking to some hearts, and I, I want to continue on with that young person. If you want to still respond forward, you can definitely do that or do business at your seat. Maybe you want to pray with somebody. Maybe you want someone to pray with you. If you want that, you can come forward. For Zach will take care of you. We'll get you over to somebody. Or maybe you want to pray with another teenager. Why is it that we're so, hang on, let me ask you a question. Why, why do we feel so awkward talking about the Lord with other saved young people? Man, we need to throw that off and let's be, let, hey, we're going to pray together and we're going to talk, we're going to talk to God together. We're going to remind ourselves, each other, that God is good. And, and, and I don't care about the awkwardness and I don't care that it's kind of weird because that's not the normal conversation I have with another teenager. It ought to become that. It should be. God is so good, we ought to be willing to talk to Him and talk about Him with other people. Hey, so maybe we need to pray with somebody else. And young person, know my heart here. I'm not trying to draw this out, but I do believe that God is still speaking to hearts and I want to give time and place to that. So if you are, if you are out, still out there at your seat, there's some still at the altar. If you're still out there at your seat and you need to do business with God, I just encourage you to do that in whatever, whatever way the Holy Spirit is leading. Go to the beginning of that song and let's go ahead and sing it. Stumbling through my life and all the choices I have made Looking to the right and so hard to find my way Coming to a crossroad Where I caught a glimpse of Him The Savior reaching out to me With hands that bore my sin No greater love was shown Than at the cross of Calvary yep. Think about that I decided then and then Man, God is good That the choice was clear to me I'll take Jesus. You got your seat, sing it. I'll take Jesus. I'll take Jesus every time. Sing it out. And he means more to me than the world you see. There's no question in my mind. I'll take Jesus Maybe there is a question in your mind and you need to get that settled. Where the invitation is still going on and some are still being dealt with. And when it's time, we'll just shut this thing down, but, but, but we'll let the Holy Spirit kind of dictate when it's time. Maybe there is a question in your mind whether or not you would take Jesus, whether or not you believe God is good. Think about it and be willing to still do business with the Lord. What if opportunity should rise up like the sun? And shine so bright on all the promises of what I could become. Blurring hands of compromise could offer wealth and fame. Tempting me to turn around, denying Jesus' name. Well, I'd rather be a poor man and have riches.
is in the truth. So without a second thought, let me tell you what I do. Sing it out. I'll take Jesus. I'll take Jesus. I'll take Jesus every time. And he means more to me than the world you see. There's no question in my mind. I'll take Jesus every time. 